Hi there, it's Nate Pat Warden, and I'm a solutions engineer with Netbox Labs. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a free integration between Netbox and Proxmox called Netbox Proxmox Automation. You can pick it up on GitHub under the Netbox Labs uh, space in a repo called Netbox Proxmox Automation. What this automation does is integrate between a documented state for a Proxmox virtual machine in Netbox and then synchronizes that final configuration to a virtual machine in Proxmox. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with Proxmox, Proxmox is very similar. It's based on, in fact, the KVM uh, virtualization technology that you can find in Linux. Proxmox in and of itself is freely av available for you to use. And if you chose or needed to have uh, commercial support, Proxmox also has various options for that. But as far as this implementation goes, if you think the way virtualization of models works inside a Netbox, and you think of the way you deploy virtual machines inside of Proxmox, we wanted to marry those two things together because as your source of truth, Netbox is going to have all the information we need about a virtual machi machine, whether it be the name of the virtual machine, the type of virtual machine it is, do we want to capture information about the underlying network interface, the IP address, things like SSH keys and so on. All that information that's collected in Netbox says, this is the way I want this virtual machine to look in Proxmox. And then we're going to do some automation by way of webhooks and event rules in Netbox, which talk to a Flask web app application, which will then use the Proxmox API to synchronize this desired VM state with Proxmox. What this implementation does not do is discover VMs and Proxmox and synchronize them into Netbox. Proxmox has an existing technology or a plugin that will synchronize with your Netbox installation, and I recommend taking a look at that. But for the time being, we are documenting a Netbox and deploying a configuration into Proxmox. There's a secondary implementation, Netbox Proxmox autom Automation, and I've done a separate video around it. Simply put, we're going to use webhooks and event, ro event rules in Netbox to uh, synchronize changes into Proxmox using AWX or Tower or AWP. But that's beyond, beyond the scope of this presentation. So let me get into how this works. So here you see I have a, a Netbox community application open version 414. It's running on Ubuntu 22.04. And here I have uh, my Proxmox 827 virtual environment. And you'll see that I have a number of VMs already started. But I want to want to walk through how this automation works generally. So when you think of adding a virtual machine to Netbox, if I was simply going to click the add button, yeah, give it a name, whatever you want, uh, and give it a status of whatever you want. But what triggers this automation with Proxmox is that since, as I mentioned earlier, when you document a virtual machine in Netbox, it is... You want it to have a complete configuration. You want to have it have a name. You want to have it have a status. You want to have it have resources, as you see here, like vCPUs, memory. Um, you have an additional disk configuration. We're not going to add the disk size here. And then you also want to be able to add things to the virtual machine, like public SSH keys. Uh, what is the Proxmox VM storage volume? In this case, is spinning drives, or pardon me, SSD for local LVM and spinning drives for PVH HDD. And I want to be able to have other customizations like for my Proxmox VM template, where here I've created a, a set of custom field choices, which are all covered in our documentation that it talk about. Here I have a given VM ID of 9000 is mapped to Jammy, 9001 is wrapped to Focal, 9002 is wrapped to Noble, and so on and so forth. Then you see Proxmox Virtual Machine ID. And the Proxmox Virtual Machine ID, you can really call it whatever you want here, but ultimately when this virtual machine gets cloned and therefore created in Proxmox, this is going to be auto-populated in Netbox, as is the initial storage state. So it's going to track whatever you've defined the boot disk to be, that initial size inside of the resources here. So since I mentioned staged, let's take a look at uh, first the webhook itself, and then I want to talk a bit about the event rules. So here you see we have one called Netbox Proxmox Flask App. And this is available if underneath the, and I'll show you the repo briefly, underneath the example Netbox webhook flask app 
directory. Here you'll see a file called app underscore config.yml-sample. Simply copy this file. Again, this is well documented in Netbox. Copy this file uh, to app underscore config.yml. Make sure all the API keys are set up and then you should be able to run uh, this, this web application. But assuming that everything is running and that you have that config all set and everything is good, what this webhook is doing is very simple. What we are saying is that uh, we're going to accept post requests only. It's going to have content type of application JSON. And here you see the payload URL. So this is the uh, public facing IP address of uh, where I'm running this web application. In this case, this happens to be a laptop computer, but it could be whatever you want. And here you see this URI, and the URI is configurable inside of that config or the app config.yaml file where you're simply going to define what this app is called and therefore what this URI is named. So we only have one webhook here for very specific reasons. Typically, if you have multiple different purposes for VM um, automation, like creating them, adding disks, adding network, adding SS key, SSH keys, starting them, stopping them, deleting them, whatever else, you might have separate webhooks or at very least separate URIs for any given webhook. But what this webhook does is it's going to figure out what this related e incoming event looks like based on what was uh, transmitted from this event rule and based on what this event signifies like a VM creation, a VM change, a VM removal, etc. It's going to then dispatch whatever it's found in that event rule to the underlying Proxmox functionality to do what you need, such as changing resources in the VM, starting the VM, stopping the VM, removing the VM, and so on. But the event rules themselves are where we get into some interesting territory. So you see for each thing you might do with a VM, adding a disk, creating the VM, updating the VM, etc. What we have done with the event rules is, yes, they're enabled and they're a webhook. The other option is to use a script. And here it's going to say, uh, we're going to, this is our webhook called the Netbox Proc Proxmox Flask app. And in the case of the VM created, this virtual machine was created. Therefore, we're going to do something. And by something, we're going to say, if this virtual machine object was created and these conditions, in this case, there, there are two, if the status of the VM in, uh, in Netbox is staged and the custom field of Proxmox template is not null, then and only then will it uh, run this webhook. Now, I'm not going to run through all these, but this is just to tell you that uh, given what you'll want to do with these various object updates or various object deletions, you're almost certainly going to want to run or have some kind of conditions. These are all documented in the uh, readme doc that is uh, discussed in the GitHub repo and how to run it. So as for now, I'm going to really punt on walking through these one by one. I want to show you how it works though. So I'm going to go over to my terminal and here you see I'm in the example Netbox uh, web hook flask app directory. And you see that I'm in a Python VM. If I was to do a pip freeze based on that requirements.txt that's in this directory, this will uh, or the pip install dash r requirements.txt will install all of these related Python modules. But since everything's already installed, what I'm going to do is simply I'm going to run this Flask application. I want it to bind to all interfaces and I'm going to listen on port 8000. So going back to our webhook itself, you can tell that we are going to connect on port 8000. So you want those two things obviously to match. So we're going to run it in debug mode. You'll see that this is a development server. I wouldn't worry about that too much because for the sake of this example, we're, we're just testing out that this concept works and I'm showing you how it works. In a production environment, certainly you'd use some kind of WSGI server like a gunicorn.py or something else that you're more comfortable with. And then you would ensure that when the system started that uh, around system D that the start and stop scripts were in place. But again, let's not worry about that for now. We see that one of the listening interfaces matches the webhook, so we can start rolling with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to virtual machines, and I'm going to add a virtual machine. I'm going to call it test, and I'm going to set it to be staged. And I'm also going to assign it to a cluster, because although it's not marked that way, you must set a VM cluster 
uh, when you're creating a virtual machine, and I'm going to set some resources as well. So we're going to go to 4096 for memory, and like I said, we're going to leave disk alone. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to put in a public SSH key. I happen to have one here, so let's do that. And then once this is all in place, we're going to click create and go over to our Proxmox window. So what we see is that a cloning process for VM9000, which is the template we picked, is kicked off. And we see that the virtual machine name is test and the virtual machine ID is 105. So we're going to let this process finish and then let's take a look at how things look in both Proxmox and in Netbox. So Proxmox first, I'm clicking on this uh, 105 VMID uh, name test, uh, virtual machine, hardware, four gigs of memory, two processors. You see that there's a hard disk defined and it's got this very specific size attached to it. And then you see uh, in the case of Cloudinit, you will see that the SSH key was provided here. But what's missing is that this disk in and of itself is uh, comparatively small. This is like 2.2 gigabytes and also we're missing our network configuration. So now let's look at Netbox and see where that landed. So this is what happened after we click the submit button. It, the VM was set to stage. These are the initial resources. Now what do we have? So we see that this uh, virtual disk space was filled in for us. This disk space is a cumulative uh, count of all the disks you have, and we're gonna take a look at that virtual disk in a moment. You see that the 105 is being the, the Proxmox VMID was auto filled. And you'll see here, there's one virtual disk that was created. Now, obviously 2.5 or probably 2.25 gigabytes is very small for an OS disk and is pretty much a non-starter. So what we're gonna wanna do with this is we're gonna wanna change the size of the disk. The reason why it's 2.25 GB is essentially that was the size of uh, the cloud in it template that came carried over from the ISO that we laid down here and that we cloned from when we created this virtual machine. Let's go ahead and say we want to make this 20 gigs for the sake of uh, just having this be somewhat sane. Click the save button and as we go over here and we take a look at hardware for tests, you see that we have gone from that 2.2 gigabytes to 20 gigs. So that's the desired effect. You can tell the resource operate, resize operation was here. Now let's say that you said, I don't want this to be 20 gigs, I want this to be 15 gigs. Well, in all honesty, while you can change the size of this disk, you can downsize it, Netbox Proxmox does not allow that. So if you need to recreate the VM, go ahead and delete it and recreate it and then change the disk to the size you want, but otherwise just be mindful of the fact that Proxmox will not let you shrink any disk. Now, if I wanted to add another virtual disk here, I'll just go add component, virtual disk and in this case it's SCSI 1 because it's the next disk in line and we're going to call this one 15 gigs we're going to keep the same storage volume we could have set it to be our our hard drive uh, if we wanted to our spinning drive if we wanted to but we'll just leave it on local LVM so what happens here is that uh, what we see is that the hard disk SCSI 1 there was a configuration change it was added it's 15 gigs and that's what we need so Ultimately, now we have two disks, but what you can do here is if you choose to say, well, I errantly added SCSI 1 at 15 gigs, and I no longer want it, that's fine. You can go into Netbox and you can say, select SCSI 1, delete selected. Of course, before you do this, because it's going to delete the disk in Proxmox, make sure that you backed it up if there was data on it that you wanted or might want in the future. So we deleted the disk you'll see that the hard disk SCSI 1 is gone. There was a configuration change there, and that's great. So now let's get into the network portion of this. Uh, going back to CloudInit, where we're going to set the IP config information for Net0, what we already have is the SSH public key, but what we want to add is the IP address and the interface for this given system. So we're going to do that part in... Um, in Netbox itself. So here we have the test virtual machine. We're going to add a component of an interface. We're going to name this after the primary physical interface or primary VM interface for the test virtual machine. We don't need anything but giving it a name here. So we're going to create it. It's enabled. And what we're going to put in here now is 
we're going to assign an IP address. So I'm going to give it this following IP address because I know it to be free. So it says slash 24. It's going to be set to active. You can give it a DNS name if you want to. And then you can make this primary IP for the device, which in fact is what you want to do because by making it primary for this device, it is going to then kick off this following automation where it says, I'm going to change the configuration of this VM to then set the IP that you just specified in NetBox along with the corresponding uh, gateway IP address. So now that we have everything in place, we have our network information for the IP and the SSH public key. We have our hardware set up for our memory and processors. We have our hard drive set to the size we want. We can then start the virtual machine. So if I was to go into this IP address that tells us the assignment, that'll take us back to the VM. I was to choose to go to the VM and said, yeah, I want this to be active. The effect of this after we click save is that it's going to start this VM. As, as you recall, uh, test is VM 105 is going to set to start. And from this point, you know, if we wanted to, we could go to the console and watch it boot up and do all of its stuff. If we so, so chose to do that, then we can SSH in when we're ready. Ultimately, uh, this, this uh, network configuration is going to be all set and you'll be in business and we'll let it finish this booting and everything will be good. Uh, once this is finished starting then, let's say that we said, great, you know, we've tested out, it's working. Maybe we just don't want it to run right now or maybe we said, eh, we'll just leave it stopped for the time being. We can then set its status to be offline and what will happen inside of Proxmox is that you'll see this VM 105 or test will be set to stop. And so you'll see test going down, going down, going down. It'll blank out in a moment as soon as the stop is complete. There you go. And now that desired state is as it should be. But the final part of this before uh, I finish talking about this uh, uh, Flask application for handling this Proxmox automation is, let's say we don't want the VM anymore at all. Simply in NetBox, click on delete. It's going to tell you the uh, related objects it's going to delete, which is fine because it's got ETH0, the one IP, and that one virtual disk. And we're just going to go handle all those deletions. And what's going to happen inside of Proxmox is that you'll see the 105 VM is gone. You'll see a stop command was given and a destroy command was given. And that's that. So in any case, I hope you take a look at this uh, NetBox Proxmox automation. It's freely available for you to use. It's been released under the Apache license. Uh, it'll be coming out very soon. It will also be documented on weblogs and videos on netboxlabs.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.